Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 70 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a fish that I found in a bait bucket when I was first learning about fish. Didn't know what it was, couldn't figure out, found out what it was, and it has stuck with me ever since because it is a super good story. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Brook Stickleback. So the Brook Stickleback, or scientific name Culea inconstans, again that's Culea inconstans, it is part of the family Gasterosteidae. I know that's a mouthful, but it's Gasterosteidae. Now, as I said, this is a freshwater fish, but the reason why it stuck with me when I, again, I was first learning about fish, is that the Gasterosteides are related to the pipefish and seahorses. Now, this is a, um, the stickleback group do have a lot of coastal fish, but there are quite a few of them that are found in freshwater, like the brook, the brook stickleback, which I just thought was super interesting when I was first learning that there was a fish related to a seahorse found in freshwater. Really, really cool fish. Now, it does have a rather wide distribution. It is. It can be found down to the southern reaches of the Mississippi River, Great Lakes drainage, um, populations exist in Colorado, Nebraska, Alberta, Manitoba, like a bunch of places in Canada. Um, they've been introduced everywhere, Alabama, Kentucky, Tennessee, South Dakota, Washington State, um, which is, I found this in a bait bucket in the panhandle of Texas. So yeah, it's been transplanted everywhere, popular bait fish, just a real, just taken everywhere taken everywhere um there's even some populations in new mexico that are actually probably native not introduced so you know it's, it's actually fairly widespread not only is it widespread throughout the u.s it actually has a um, wide range of habitats um, that you can be found in almost anything flowing water and even very slow moving water rivers streams floodwaters lakes ponds potholes hot springs sinkholes meltwaters spring fed ponds i mean these things are just found everywhere in everything that you can find them in however they're still potentially vulnerable they're still a potentially vulnerable species to go extinct and we'll get into that in a little bit but you wouldn't think with something with that wide range of habitats and that wide range of distribution could be in problems um, but it actually is now this is a small fish um you know you can probably gather that from these pictures this small fish about a max length of three to five centimeters which is 1.2 to two inches and they're usually this gray olive green this they usually have some modeling um breeding males and females will get much darker um, this darker green body and their fins will actually sometimes t uh, turn this kind of copper or red color right over here but they're usually found more in this sort of mottled pattern right here um, most of the other sticklebacks when they go into full-on breeding mode their throats get red their bellies get red they develop pretty fantastic coloration especially on the male counterpart now, as you can tell on this, they do have this kind of tapering body with this really thin caudal peduncle right at the end, which is the base of the tail fin. Then they have this big fan tail fin. Um, and then they, they basically, they also have these uh, two opposite dorsal and anal fins. That's pretty common if you think about how seahorses fins are arranged. They have these sort of fin sh uh, shapes and locations as well. But the reason why it's called a stickleback and something you've probably noticed in these pictures is the spines. Um, the brook stickleback usually has five or six spines on the back with one right in front of the anal fin. Um, now there are other sticklebacks that have bigger spines, more spines, but these are, the brook just has these five or six. Now these spines are, I guess technically used for defense but they're really ineffective and these fish are eating eaten by 
basically anything other fish birds there's been evidence that not evidence they've been found to be um, being preyed upon by predaceous diving beetles i mean everything kind of eats these um uh, brooks stickleback does lack the bony plates that other sticklebacks have and you know what seahorses and pipefish is what their skeletons are they are scaleless but there may be very small minute bony plates right along the pores of the lateral line system going down the body now these are a rather voracious predator um well eater i guess just to say they primarily eat insects but the brook stickleback specifically will also feed on plants and algae but they're primarily insect um eaters but they're they can be pretty voracious but the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on is actually their reproduction cycle not just any one part of their uh, reproduction but their reproduction cycle so if you remember i said that these are still could be potentially vulnerable to problems in certain populations well the reason why for that is the very first thing we'll get into is that these fish actually migrate annually up streams and creeks from rivers and lakes to spawn in the weedy areas of the shallows um, so that's the big reason why these could be in problems um, so they migrate annually and then the males find a spot that they can protect that they find a territory that they feel they, they can defend and then they construct a nest which is really interesting so this is kind of the second interesting fact about this and there's just going to be so many i'm, I'm going to stop saying this is second third there's just so many interesting facts about their reproductive cycle so the males find a spot that they feel that they can protect and then they construct this nest and they construct it with algae roots other aquatic ve vegetation but then something that's really interesting about sticklebacks is that the male will actually um, secrete something called spigen. It's what holds all of that material, those leaves, vegetation, everything together. That spigen is actually a kidney secretion. So they actually secrete a fluid from their kidneys that is like the glue that holds everything together. And the nest is constructed in a way that it only has one entrance to the nest with no exit no exit i want to make that very clear and then when a female and by the way i'm going to assume this is a female in breeding time because i feel that this uh is a belly full of eggs i'm just going to assume that but i feel like it's a pretty good assumption so when a female enters the nest she will deposit her eggs by shaking violently violently and each one each time she shakes it allows her to push out more eggs then once all of the eggs have been deposited the female will actually continue on through the nest and push her way out the other side of the nest making another hole um during that process the male the female will actually make acoustic noises um, so sounds that's actually thought to advertise to other males in the area that she is a ready for um she is uh, reproductively active and it actually could also advertise to sneaker males which are males that couldn't defend a territory or find, build a nest, try and sneak into the nest and fertilize it themselves. And then after the female um, escapes the nest, the female will actually uh, attack the female, chase her away from the nest. The male will enter the nest after he chases the female off, which I assume that's when the sneaker males might come in and fertilize. Once he's done with that, he will usually repair the nest to let other spawning females come in um sometimes even a male will build a second larger nest and take the eggs from the first nest the smaller nest to the newer bigger nest carrying the eggs in his mouth anyway so the male is protects the eggs just like you know males uh male seahorses so the males are sitting at the edge of the nest and fanning the edges of the uh, fanning the eggs to continually have uh, fresh water go over the eggs so the eggs don't die from 
the oxygenated water. After, you know, they, the male is just protecting them. Even after they are hatched, the male stickleback will um, stay over them. And the newly hatched sticklebacks will stay in the nest until they uh, eat the yolk sac, until the yolk sac is fully dissolved. And then the, the, when they develop fins and they start wandering, the male, anytime the fry actually leave the nest, which are the baby fish, the male will actually go collect them up in his mouth and spit them back into the nest. He continues to do this until they keep, they swim out at a rate that he cannot uh, go out, gather them and spit them back in the nest. Basically, he gets, he tries to keep, take care of them, keeping them in the area and then Whenever he can't keep them in an area for long enough, he either abandons them or he starts to eat them and they disperse and go about their business. Um, so super interesting reproductive cycle. Um, something else about this, um, some research I've found says that these are deemed an annual species. These fish grow extremely quickly during their first summer and reach sexual maturity um, by the spring of the next year. So they're usually, you know, I believe their birth around in the summer or uh, maybe late spring and then by the next spring they're actually sexually mature and apparently a lot of adults die within that spawning season or shortly after causing um after that that's what causes them to be an annual species so an incredibly incredibly complex diverse reproductive cycle hope you enjoyed it i know i enjoyed learning about this but thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Please leave a comment. Let me know of a fish that you'd like to see. I would really appreciate it, and I love reading all the comments. And thank you so much for the love and support. Once again, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.